How do you finish the back of your mosaic? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you several different ways that you can use to finish the backs. And I'm going to show you that right now. When it comes to finishing the back of your mosaics, it needs to look as good as the front. It needs to look like it's cared for. Now, if you're using a wood substrate, what most people do is they will paint the back. I also do the same. I like to uh, paint the back in a color that's going to complement the overall mosaic. In a lot of cases, I'll just paint it black because that works with most things. Now, the paint I like to use is a acrylic paint and I like to ensure it's a matte or a satin finish. I don't like to use gloss because gloss highlights any imperfections. It's like your house when you are painting the inside of the ceiling of your house. Most people paint it a matte finish because it, highlight, it, it doesn't highlight any imperfections in the roof. And it's the same thing on this. I like to use a satin finish most times because it gives it a very slight amount of gloss, but not enough that brings out the imperfections. So all we do is we just get a paintbrush and some black paint, and I happen to have a can here, and we just paint it on. Now you can roll it. I like to paint it because I find that when I use a roller, I find cleaning the roller is an absolute pain. So all I do is I just paint it on. Turn that around. Paint this side here. It's just a matter of covering all the areas. It's nothing special. I like to use a very good quality paint uh, because there are different qualities. So don't just buy on price. And that's really about it. And then what I'll do is I'll come back, I'll let that dry, and then I come back and put another coat on it. So that's, that will come up really, really well with the next coat. So I'll put that over here. Now the other thing I like to do on the back of my mosaics is I like to also put a stencil on there, such as this one. This one's had quite a bit of use such as uh, this particular stencil. Now you can get these from cake decorating shops, craft stores, uh, you know, there's so many places you can buy stencils from. And like I said, it's amazing what you can find at your local cake decorating supplier that you can use for your mosaics. Now in this particular case, and you can put it any particular way, this hasn't been sealed in any way. So when I do this, I am going to get a bit of bleed into the wood. It's not going to be a defined pattern. But I really quite like that effect. So if you're after a uh, more defined pattern, you will have to prime this. Uh, so as when, that, when you've primed it, it dries, then you can put the stencil on uh, and you'll get a more defined pattern. But I really don't mind that, that look of the paint bleeding into the timber. Uh, especially for the back, it kind of like looks an aged look. And you can do lots of different things to actually, uh, once you've done this, to actually age this if you want. Now, obviously if you're selling your mosaics, uh, the more you do to the back, the more costlier it's going to become. So you need to kind of take that into consideration. But in this particular instance, this is just to show you some of the ways that I do. Uh, and th there are lots and lots of other ways as well to do the backs, but these are the ones that I tend to go with. So we'll put it on that side there. So all I'm going to do is get this sponge, which I have here, I've dabbed it, but I'm gonna dab it a bit more. And I'll actually get this plate because I've been dabbing around. There you go. I've actually been dabbing around on that plate. And all we're going to do, and I'll just turn it this way so you can probably see it, is hold it firmly and we just position it where we think it's going to work best for the flowers and that. Probably around there. Whoops, no, I'll go there. And we're just going to dab it on. And you don't even have to, you don't even have to um, put a lot of paint on it to create an effect. Just put a bit more paint on that actually. The effect is going to come down to how much paint you put on it and what you're looking for what, you know, like, how do you want the finish to be? And like everything, everyone's different in, in what they like. It's, it's like art, everyone's different in what they like. 
Um, but that's fine. That's, they say that's what makes the world go round. So we'll take that off now. And as you can see, that looks really quite good. Now, what I'm going to do now is put that aside because I'll get it everywhere. So you can create an effect like that and see how it's kind of like bleeding in a little bit. So if you don't mind that, uh, you know, I really like that effect. And if you don't want that effect, you can just put a primer on it and then uh, apply the stencil and it'll be nice and sharp for you. Let's just try that other side with just a small amount of paint. So I'll just dip that in there. And we're just going to put a, whoops, we're just going to put another flower. Now I know that's not properly dried, so it may smudge a little bit, but I'm really just looking at this to see if we just put a small amount of paint. Hold that down. Okay, that'll do it. There you go. And that's a good effect too. It's quite a stippled effect. So you can do anything uh, for the back by using a stencil. It depends on how well you want it to look. So let's have a look at one completely finished. And I just happen to have one here. So there's the back. Uh, that's one way of doing it with a, uh, two coats of paint and see how well that's come up. And then that's the back with the stencil look. And again, uh, it, it has bled into the wood, which I really like. But like I said, if you don't want that, prime it and then apply the stencil and you get a nice sharp finish. And how much you want it to look, the effect uh, with, with uh, the paint depends on how, how much you're going to put on. Also, you can also thin the paint too. But that's a couple of ways. Now that's on the timber. Now, if you look up on screen now, you'll also see a heart that I did some time ago or a number of years ago now. And I created the layout. Uh, I printed it out onto self-adhesive vinyl and then I then uh, applied that and put a nice ribbon around the outside and between the decal and the ribbon, it complements the overall design of the mosaic. So there are a few of the ways that you can use for a wooden substrate. Now, before we go on to the next one, uh, I just want to point out that when you are uh, going to be painting or uh, using a stencil on, on it, I do, if, if there's marks on it or anything, I do use some sandpaper and sand those marks off because you don't want any lumps and bumps if you can avoid it. Uh, but certainly even if you do have a few lumps and bumps, just painting it is going to make it look cared for. But I do like to sand it and the same on this side. I also like to uh, sand it before I put the actual stencil on. And when I'm coating uh, the back, you may have seen me when I'm wiping it, on the final, I wipe it in one direction because what that does is it saves you getting a whole messy, if you get brush strokes in it, which this has very fine brush strokes, it doesn't look like it's a squiggly pattern. By doing it in one way, it's very uniform and it just finishes it off beautifully. Okay, let's have a look at the next substrate. Okay, this is the next substrate. This is Marmox board uh, and a similar product is called Weedy board as well. Now, when I'm using this, I generally use thin set, and sometimes thin set will get onto the back of the weedy board. Uh, you know, sometimes I can be just really plain messy. If this happens to get thin set on the back, then all I do is I get some sandpaper and I sand it off. And there's two things I do when I'm doing, or three things I do. I do it outside and I wear a mask and I wear my glasses. But your mask and doing it outside is most important and if you can do it upwind because the thin set will have silica dust in it and you don't want to be breathing that in. That's bad for your lungs. So doing it upwind, sanding it off, wearing a mask will give you, will give you pretty good protection. Now when it comes to this you can actually uh, roll it on the paint and I just again I use a satin paint. You can just use a paintbrush or, oops, messy, or you can just paint it on or you can just roll it, whatever your preference is. I, like I say, if I have a large area to do, because this has got a, a number of pits in it because it's the makeup of what it is, uh, I will generally roll it. But if it's a small area like this, I will paint it. Because I know, for me, washing out rollers is just painful for me. I just, it's just messy. 
uh, and I have to end up, and I never get the roller as good as what it is like day one. So I just sort of paint it on and push it in. And I just dabble it in like that. And it has a lovely finish when, it, when, it's, um, when it's all dry and cured. And again, in this case, we want to make sure we get into all those little nooks and crannies. Whoops. So we do it all different ways. This is not like wood that's flat. And then I just go across on the final thing. And we'll come back and see what that's like when it's dried, just with one coat. And don't forget, when you finish your stencil, wash it out quickly because you don't want to get dried paint on your stencil or in your paintbrush. There's nothing worse than you forget about your paintbrush and you come back and the paint's dried in it. You will never get it back to how it should be, or, or, or you might, but it might require a lot of effort. There's the back of the uh, Marmox board finished. It's come up really well. And remember, when you are coating your substrates, don't apply a really thick lot of paint on it just to get it done in one coat, because you are better off doing a couple of coats and it, and it drying in between, rather than one big, thick coat of paint. You won't get that really nice finish if you, uh, if you try and do it with a big coating of thick paint. That's the other side of the bird there that I stenciled, uh, that's come up really well. And uh, like I say, uh, there's many other different ways you can finish the back of the substrates. It just depends how much time you wanna spend on it. And if you're selling your pieces, then the more you spend on the back, the more it's going to add to the cost at the uh, retail price. Okay, well I hope you've taken something away from this video. If you have any comments, put them down in the comments section. Uh, if you have any uh, better ideas or any different ways of doing the backs of the mosaics, put them also down in the comments section. I'll be pleased to have a read of them and I'm sure others will too. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.